darkness is coming. The Saxons will take the isle. Come home, Arthur. Only you can save Britain. Right. So, guys, first, uh, congratulations on the show. It looks amazing. And to, my you. first thought was, uh, who brought this idea to you guys? Like, how does it start? So, uh, I had wanted to do a King Arthur series for years and years and years. I think I, you know, read as many of the books and the poems and everything that you could possibly lay your hands on and watched all the films and the TV adaptations. And Bad Wolf is based in Wales. And I just felt, you know, I, I, could, I could feel that story around us. Um, and then we got very, very lucky because um, some American producers, Sherry, led by Sherry Marsh, brought into me the novels and they had a shopping agreement on, on the novels. And so it started there. And I, I knew the novels before it, it became a possibility for adaptation. And as soon as they said, you know, the, we have the Winter King, frankly, as as Jer as as the movie Jeremy Maguire says, they had me at hello. I, I was I was certain I wanted <laughs> us to do it. All right. But it's always frightening when you have a period piece and you know that yes. you need costumes and it costs a lot. And uh, right now, the viewers will not buy, you know, like cutting corners and those uh, corny things that trying to be good, but you can see that they don't have any budget. So I'm curious how big of a fight for you was to show it in a quality style, not as a budget one. Do you want to talk about the, of the budget? And then I'll come sweep in behind you, Latlin. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's it's something that, you know, we Bad Wolf pride ourselves on, which is um, making sure that we get the money on the screen. And, you know, the point you raise is spot on, that, you, you know, everything's got to feel authentic and smell authentic. Um, and it's, you know, we went to huge lengths to make sure um, when it came to the actual uh, costume design itself, that it felt appropriate to the fifth century. So we worked with Professor Ronald Hutton, um, who's a specialist on the Dark Ages, um, to make sure that, uh, you know, because you you, there's no Gore-Tex jackets in those days, you've got to dig into fabrics, animal skins, how you make them waterproof. Um, and, and, and in some respects, you know, the fact that it was so difficult to have proper clothing in those days meant that you didn't have many changes at all. So it meant that um, the people, um, the people who are generally working uh, would maybe have only one set of clothes and then any other clothes that they have have just been stolen off the battlefield from other people. So it was really important to us that we, you know, we really dug into that so that um, when it came to the, the visual style, and it's something that Otto Bathurst, our, our lead director and EP, um, talked a lot with us about because he wanted to make sure that this felt like the definitive Arthur piece in the sense of making it feel authentic and grounded in that world. So it meant that a lot of the choices were helped along um, by rooting it in that real strong sense of reality. I would I would just add to that by saying, you know, I, I've worked on some shows with very big budgets and some with very skinny budgets. You always want more, whether whether you're on the skinny version or, or the really fat version, you're always kind of chasing the ambition. It's just the nature of the job. I guess it's like your salary, whatever you earn, you seem to spend. Um, so for us on the winter king it was about the prep it was about making real choices early on you know what could we build what couldn't we afford to build what episodes would have more vfx what episodes would have the horse budget you know we couldn't do everything all at once on every episode we had to really choose and i think you know that can be frustrating sometimes but more than anything, it can also be very creative. You kind of need parameters to hit against because I, I absolutely believe that the budget is part of the creative process. Um, and what was difficult was, you know, something that Lachlan has touched on. Fifth century, nothing really exists. So you're having to build or you're having to, you know, do significant work to. So that it needs real thinking. You can't kind of cheat in the way that you can with some later period pieces. So it's hard. And, you know, I think we did 
I think we did well in what the show looks like. You know, we really no, did. I have, I have to stop you right here. It's it looks amazing. Like, uh, well, I, thank you because I, you know, I, you. I, I, you know, I have to say I'm nervous because we we weren't. You know, an audience is is used to Game of Thrones and the Lord of the Rings adapt. You know, when we're not that kind of show, so you have to focus your storytelling. So you're also intimate as well as trying to realize. You know no, the period. I, I like how it looks like. I like I how the people are are uh, mudded and not so clean like in other shows. When you say like, really, so clean. Yeah. So it, it looks but amazing. It in terms of the creative collaboration as well, it, it's just one of those moments where with the most brilliant team of uh, people to work with, right from you know Kate and uh, Brooke and Ed Whitmore, our writers, Otto Bathurst, our costume designer, director of photography. And everyone really wanted to make sure that whatever we committed to making, uh, it was yeah. going to be there, there large on the screen. And I think that when you've got the right brains and minds behind it, from both an editorial as well as a production perspective, uh, and you know where you want to focus your money for all the various episodes, it's just a, very, it's a really strong discipline that you've just got to get into. No, you but you also, you also, sorry, you also reminded me of something that was much discussed creatively, which is often when you have the King Arthur story told on screen, there's a choice. It's either mud and furs and dirt, or it's chiffon and silks and and turrets. And, you know, what we were trying to do with this piece is kind of take from both. So it's very grounded. It's, it's very authentic. It's very researched in the way that Lachlan has talked about but I hope it still has a beauty because you want the what you want an audience to understand why the characters are fighting for the world they live in. You know, it has to be a, a world you want to explore. I saw the three episodes right now, and uh, the beauty is there. But I have to ask you because you said about the storytelling, and uh, when you have such a big material and you want to do a TV series, then you're talking with two ideas first. We want to shoot how much we can to make it very, very fast and that uh, people see what's happening. Or we're thinking about the big picture and probably not only one season. And I'm curious, which approach did you guys take? Because if you yeah. use everything in the first one and you receive a uh, green light for next one, you will stuck with nothing. So I'm curious, <laughs> what was your approach? I feel like you were with us on the shoot um, asking these questions. Um, so we're in it in success. We'd like five seasons uh, with without question, because there's a trilogy of novels. And what season one covers is the first, roughly the first two thirds of the first novel. And there are things that we know we want to get to, which will come later. So there's a Morgan story. There's a Christian rise of Christianity story that we would, we would get to slightly later. So I feel certainly with what material is available that we could continue for, for more seasons. Um, but, you know, you try, you, you have that long-term hope and ambition but you also obviously try to make the first season as as you know satisfying for an audience as you possibly can. All right, so I have to ask this question, and sorry if you'll be feeling a little bit off with it. But right now, with what's happening and that everything is stopped, are you guys a little bit afraid how it will impact your project? Well, look, I'm a producer, so I live in fear the whole time. Because you're always you're always worried. You're always you know dealing with you know pulling things together, but for us we're a UK based production. We're non WGA. We're non SAG. So you know we are continuing to develop a, a you know a possible season two in the usual way. But yes, we're in very scary times, and you know the whole you know I'm based in Los Angeles we need the strike to be resolved. And I feel so badly for people that are struggling, you know, four months in, you know, we can't do anything without the writers and the actors. So it is a frightening time without question. Because I know that uh, many projects were stopped and uh, you're based in UK, as you said, but 
it streams uh, in America, in Poland, in everywhere. So I yeah. can imagine that it touches all, all of the ground. It really does. All right. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, they write to me that our time is over. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I, I feel <laughs> like you, you know like in the jimmy kimmel show like apologize for matt damon we are run out of time so thank you very much fingers <laughs> thank crossed you very for much. the next four seasons i'm really really want to see how this one will end because i can feel a cliffhanger probably sitting over there somewhere so <laughs> fingers thank crossed you. and uh, i hope to see you in bigger capacity capacity uh, for the next season. Thank you guys. Thank you. Take care. Thanks.